Sup, my beach people. Uh, yeah, you guys have a we're gonna have a great time looking at uh, beach condition or beach sustainability index data. You guys have uh, this is the, one of the ugliest data sets we have. There's there's just a lot of messiness that we need to clean up, but you guys are totally up for it. It's gonna be great. You guys are gonna help us um, uh, evaluate some of the metrics that we've been developing and and try some alternative. Uh, approaches and things of that nature and look at the different components. So uh, can't wait. So stoked you guys are, are helping us uh, explore the um, beach sustainability database for your capstone. Um, and uh, just introduce it to you and have you guys start to poke around it uh, for a bit to begin to get a sense of what the data is like. Um, so let's start with the data. Data has, there's various parts here, but we're going to start with the um, this uh, compiled and edited version. And then you need to check and see what other components, uh, what other data, which of the other files we might need to merge into here. And this data is um, uh, collected. Uh, what, we're, what you're seeing right here is data once a year at Broad Beach, Carpinteria, El Matador Beach, etc. Now, some of our data actually is, we have multiple data points for some years, and so um, I think this, this is the data that's been cleaned, but it still, I think, needs some additional cleaning. And uh, the idea here is we take a, a host of um, uh, different metrics and quantify them, typically in a rapid fashion. Uh, so what we see here is, is the location, the beach name, the year of the data collection, and then, um, uh, how much data we have here. <clears throat> There's two broad types of uh, data collection efforts. One where we go into the field and do and do uh, what we might call full or regular assessments, and then these so-called synoptic assessments, which happen on a Father's Day weekend every summer. And this is where we get a bunch of people and everybody runs out to different beaches, and within a couple hours, we count the people at the beach and the vehicles in the lot, parking lot, um, for a given beach. And so we don't, necess don't necessarily count everything, but we do count the attendance. That's one thing that, that fluctuates. Because normally we can go and measure these things and, and, and collect this data, say, at noon or at 8 in the morning or what have you. And so while things like the uh, uh, disturbance or, or, or evidence of driving on the beach, etc., that doesn't really matter for eight o'clock or ten o'clock or noon. Um, the people really does. It's it's very sensitive, and so um, so we do have synoptic surveys as well as just the full surveys. Okay. So we have the beach, we have the beach, we have the year. Let me just a little bit. Uh, you guys see this? Okay, but if I zoom in a little bit more, zoom like that. Okay. So beach year uh, uh, type of data collection effort, uh, who was the data collector, um, the data collector, if there was another um, data grab. Uh, again, the beach, the state, these should all be in California. But note, we need to standardize this, right? So in addition to just looking over the data, the first step is going to be just beginning to standardize. So it's OK if we do uh, CA, but everything needs to be CA. We can't have some things be CA and some things be California, for example. Same thing with the date and time format. Um, uh, weather observations, this is um, the, the tidal height at the data collection, and if it was rising or falling. Uh, weather conditions, wind conditions, etc. Most of this should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, uh, and then this is evidence of these critters on the surface from our uh, visual inspections and or from our uh, 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 brief digging in the ground. And so this just indicates that there was at least some emerita present, at least some blefs present, at least some uh, sand hoppers, et cetera. Um, and then we, uh, and, and, so, and so this is called shells, but this is actually um, referring to this stuff over here, which is mostly shells, but it's also potentially some other structures as well. And this is the total species richness or apparent rich, richness for those categories of things. Rack. Rack is the amount of deposited algal material on the beach. 
And so we have, a, again, several different categories, seagrass, kelp, um, uh, green alga, red algae, etc. Excuse me. Um, and so this is rack on the beach, uh, uh, algal rack. This is woody rack. So this refers to um, uh, driftwood and the like. And then we have the amount of stressors on the beach. And so there's a, a variety of types of stressors from mechanical vehicles to people burning fires to um, driving uh, remote control cars on the beach, etc. And then again, this would be the total number of those stressors that we see. Um, and then do we see any dead vertebrates? We sometimes see mammals. We sometimes see dead birds. Um, and then if we did, what, the, what, the, what they were. Uh, now, originally we were, we were going very specific with birds, but in the last couple of years, we've, we, this has been evolving and we've gone less and less, uh, with less and less specificity for birds because we're trying to you make this be a rapid indicator. And uh, some birds, many birds are hard to tell the difference down to species level. So we've um, sort of settled on how many gulls are there of any type, how many corvids, mostly we're talking about crows here, how many cr corvids we see, but it could also be scrub jays and, and the like, how many pigeons, and then how many shorebirds, again, these are, these are uh, sandy beach um, uh, characteristically residing birds. Um, uh, do you see any other birds? So maybe there's some pelicans or something of that nature. And then people just fill that, fill that out. Um, tar. Do we see any tar? And is this tar uh, fresh or weathered? Um, do we collect any? A lot of times we, uh, especially after the 2015 refugio oil spill, we started collecting data and um, uh, or collecting samples of tar for archiving purposes. Um, and then these are just elements of the beach. So uh, back dunes, dunes, etc. cetera. These are ice plant, different things about the landscape. <clears throat> um, how much of the beach was sand versus rubble and cobble, etc. cetera. Um, what percentage of the back beach, or what was the, what was the um, back of the beach? So was it all a parking lot? Was it a small cliff? Was it houses, et cetera? See, this is percentages. Um, how many parking spaces are there in the parking lot, assuming there is a parking lot? And then at the time of the survey, how many cars are parked in the parking lot? Um, and then how many cars are parked on the road? Now, typically this would be something like PCH in highly, highly urbanized areas like um, Santa Monica Beach. This is very hard and it's, not a, it's, not, it's usually not particularly possible, but for many of our beaches, we can both indicate the number of cars in the lot and the number of cars on the frontage road or freeway. Um, yeah, okay, same thing during the rapid assessment. Um, we do try to collect samples from things like sand crabs, etc. So this is just an inventory of what we collected, brought back to the lab. Uh, and then we should have photos for all these places, uh, different different photos looking up close, down close, out to sea, panoramics, etc. And then this is how many people, this is our, our people count on the beach. So we don't just count people, we also count activities. So how many people were sunbathing? How many people were wading or swimming in the water? Um, how many people were fishing? How many people were surfing? Uh, how many people were kite surfing? Now kite surfing has a potentially significantly different effect because a different impact on the beach because the kite surfers uh, have these long lines, they lay them out, there's potentially some disturbance of the sand. Um, so that's why we break that apart. And people were essentially exercising, running, walking, digging. This is classic uh, little kids uh, or bigger kids and they're digging big big trenches in the sand for sand castles and the like. Anybody um, bouldering? So this says rock climbing, but really it was just talking about bouldering in the intertidal at low tide. Um, or if they're doing any other things. And so we have the total number of people broken out of those various categories. Um, uh, yeah, I think I said that. Okay, are there any dogs there? Are there any dogs on leash? How many dogs are there on leash versus how many dogs are there off leash? Um, are there stairs? Are there, are there um, public stairs and are there um, private stairs? Gates, are there uh, gates to get to the beach uh, that uh, um, on 
public land that, that, that constrain access, and this is private gates, usually to private houses. Um, and then how many uh, lifeguard towers are there, and how many of those are manned, and how many are unmanned at the time of the survey. Uh, firings, how many firings are there on the beach in our survey area? Um, how many trash cans are there in our survey area? How many restrooms? How many showers? How many camping sites um, at or very close to the beach? How many picnic tables are there? How many large groups are at the beach? So this would be things like surf camps or large exercise camps. Um, how many volleyball courts? How many... Um, uh, so, so now this would be, um, uh, uh, it says culverts, conduits or culverts. Um, so conduits are relatively small pipes that usually come out of the cliff and they're some type of sort of like a French drain type style thing. Culverts are much larger and these are, these transport larger volumes of water typically under a roadbed. So this would be more of on the order of, you know, two, three feet in diameter. Uh, or bigger culverts. We have some measures from a distance. Can you see tar? Uh, and, and several of our approaches, we've taken the approach of um, none, uh, some, uh, or none, little, some, and a lot. It's a sort of semi-quantitative scale about various things. And so hence that's what the zero, one, two, or three refers to. Um, uh, do we, can, we, can we see trash from a distance? Can we see the rack line from a distance, et cetera? Um, then we actually measure the slope of the um, sand. Increasingly, we're doing this with drones, but we historically have done this with a um, level uh, on, our, on our smartphone. Uh, and uh, so there you go. So, that, so that, that's the, the key stuff. So we need to start going through this, making sure everything's standardized. Things are um, consistently binned. And I just want to show you uh, real quick before we uh, go on. Oops. There, yeah. So this other is this analysis folder. This is some of the analysis that I've been doing. Um, and so for for this, for example, we're trying to come up with a, a simple index that integrates these various aspects of our sandy beach uh, 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 functioning. And so um, we've taken the approach of of having three variables, a socioeconomic variable, a, an ecological variable, um, and a geomorphological variable. And uh, so we're curious as to how the best way to combine these different uh, submetrics, et cetera. But uh, what I've done here in this, this work this summer is to calculate data for 2014 and 2019. Um, and then uh, look at uh, sea level rise and how, how these function these values may or may not change. Um, but what I wanted to point out was uh, these are all the things that I used in my um, calculations. So I use all these stressors, mechanical vehicles, RC cars, drones, driftwood structures, homeless folks, groom, beach grooming, um, et cetera. Um, and a tar, uh, Corvids, large woody debris, which should indicate there is some heavy storms um, previously to, to move that those materials around. Dogs, etc., gulls, and uh, and I combine all this stuff together. Oh, sorry, there's other things too, like um, shorebirds and nesting birds, um, and the amount of trash on the beach, grooming, how much rack remains, which is generally a good sign of a healthy beach, uh, how the kelp offshore kelp beds are doing. Um, crab diversity is something we've found to be very important. So, so sites with high, with good water quality tend to have the greatest diversity of sand crabs. Um, and so on and so forth. So we've done some parasite uh, work. Um, unclear how much data you'll have access to in terms of various years, but this is the amount of parasites inside of our emerita, our sand crabs. Uh, fecal indicator bacteria, that's the one thing we don't collect data ourselves. This comes from Heal the Bay, and uh, this just gives us a sense of gross water quality condition. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. So then I think that that's pretty self-explanatory. So so have a look at the at the data um, and and start playing around and see what you can find. Again, I would recommend you start looking at the copy of mastered, compiled, edited February 2019. Start looking at that data and and poke around for a bit, and then we can talk soon. Thanks, you guys. Looking forward to this project. It's going to be great. We're going to have a fun time seeing uh, if we can construct different uh, metrics and and different aspects of of the beach and beach health.